this is, this is, this is. Welcome to it, you guys. Welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast, 467. Let's kick it off right now. We're going to go um, straight to the Facebook message group. Um, if you're not already part of that and you listen to the podcast regularly, join us up. If you're on Facebook, join us because it's my career podcast Facebook group. Lots of fun questions, fun topics. I'm going to go ahead and just read some of these. Um, Bob McKnight, producer extraordinaire for the podcast, he posted up a question. What's a unique, strange, or amazing talent you have? And we got a couple answers. Jory Randall wrote, it might now sound, it, it might now, okay, he, he meant to say it might not sound that amazing, but I can almost always walk into a room and find someone I know or a connection to someone I know with a complete stranger. Once I was working a CrossFit event in Oregon and met the son of my grandpa's dentist in South Dakota. A different time, I went to see Mike H. in Seattle at a small bar, saw a couple that the woman was very pregnant and offered a seat for them at the booth we were in. Turned out I had been to his show a few years earlier in Portland at a friend's house. Bonus, he was there to have a meeting with Mike before the show, so I got to have a beer with Mike. So crazy. Yeah, uh, that's that's an amazing talent, Jory. <laughs> it's like, and then Bob says, like seven degrees of bacon sort of thing. Rad, yeah. Um, Jen Mandigo says, I can talk people down from crazy stuff. Usually they were naked. Sometimes poop was involved. Can you guess my job? <laughs> She's laughing. Uh, <laughs> Bob McKnight goes, no, but anyone who listens to my show knows I'm very intrigued by this butt stuff. Anyway, <laughs> she works... Um, she works at, or at least used to work as a, as a print, a prison, a prison uh, psychologist kind of thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> she doesn't work that job anymore. Um, Tom Chichella says, I am absurdly good at giving Bob McKnight a hard time. Yeah, Tom, you're really good at that. Amazing at that. Uh, Matt Osterlund, or is it Osterlund? I'm great at farting in public and blaming it on my kids. <laughs> yeah, we all we all have that talent now and again. Uh, Bob McKnight says, "I hate to do this, but but to you, but most of us dads do the same." So yeah, he's he's basically saying yeah, that's not a it's not a unique talent. <laughs> all right, you guys, thanks for calling in. The number is one three six zero. 830-6660. I'm getting through some of these voicemails. Believe me, if you called recently, I just haven't gotten to your voicemail yet. There's a, there's a lot in there, but but uh, I don't want to discourage you, you guys to call. If you have something you want to say, say it. And, and if it's really important, get on the Facebook message group. Let us know you, you, you know, left a message. It's really important. Check it out. And I will do so. I will do so when I can. All right, let's get to the first voicemail. Let's go. Hey, Mike, what's going on? This is Russ Lyman, longtime listener. Um, I actually run a podcast as well. I was listening to the last episode. You were talking about how you have the video podcasts on YouTube, and then you also put it out to Spotify and iTunes and all that. So um, my podcast is called The Weekly Warp Pipe. We're all about retro video games and talking nostalgia about toys and 90s fashion and cool stuff like that. So I started it out on YouTube doing the video podcast and then I put it out to Spotify and Spotify also has video format as well and we're up to episode 53 now but the earlier episodes I was adding all of that like b-roll making it flashy like you said uh, my co-host is in North Carolina and he tunes in via you we go through StreamYard so mm -hmm. we're on video chat with that and then i would overlay we're talking about a video game i'd overlay the gameplay i would spend three four hours editing the podcast putting it up on the youtube channel and i wouldn't see that much more views if i just didn't put all that flashiness so we now shied away from that doing less of the b-roll if you will and um it's just us talking and sometimes I can open up like a web page if I'm talking about something and I could showcase that. But I always have to remember 
the people that are just listening, I need to describe, you know, what we're seeing on there so they don't feel left out. But, yeah, loving your podcast. I listen to it as much as I can. I submitted a uh, little thing for New Music Monday to check out my band Saturday Matinee. Uh, we put out a few albums. Yeah. We were back in um, 2004 to 2008 when we were a band. But we got back together in 2020 and did a fun little reunion thing because we saw Goldfinger do their quarantine video. I left a, a full message on the Facebook page. Keep up the great work. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you in concert again. And I'll talk to you later. Russ, 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 Russ. What's up, man? So thank you for calling in. I actually... Obviously, you called in a little while ago because I already played Saturday Matinee on a Music Monday. So, um, congratulations. I, I re remember your band. It was cool. Really well done. little quarantine video you guys did. And I, I dig it. So, thanks for calling in. I love the talk about the podcast and how, you know, it's like we, we have the same struggle. You're like, you're spending all this time working on the details of like B-roll to add into the conversation so you can see some cool stuff while we're talking and you know, I like to do that with um, when we're talking about videos or people, you know, coming in with a video, music video. I love to put that on the podcast, the video version. Um, and I still do that, but I, exactly like you, I mean, back to it, I've found that it's just, it really barely bumps up the amount of views that I get. And obviously, you know, not a lot of people watch my podcast versus listen to it more, way more people listen to it. Um, and I feel like sometimes like, okay, maybe it's just because I didn't start with video really until like a couple years ago, like a year ago or something. Um, maybe they're just, maybe that's just not going to catch fire the same way the, the actual audio part of the podcast did, but, um, that's all right. You know, Hey, we, we try things that uh, nothing to me, like everything is a, an experiment. Everything is like, let's try this. Let's try this. Even when things work out really well. I don't go back to it and try it again. Like I, I'm on to the next thing, which is in some ways probably tragic because, uh, you know, when you double down on success and you double down on things that are really working and I'm not saying I haven't tried things again, but, but in general, I just kind of just move on and I just keep, keep going with whatever's new. And sometimes that works. Sometimes it really doesn't work. Um, so yeah, uh, your your podcast sounds pretty cool, man. Um, weekly warp pipe, video weekly warp pipe. Anyway, um, I, I get into I get into um, all types of podcasts, but lately, lately I've been into just podcasts that get me motivated, podcasts that get me thinking about what I could be doing that I'm not already doing, and and I maybe this podcast can be that for somebody as well now and again. But, um, but yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't know. I, let me just, let me just end it by saying I'm still going to do B roll on videos when it, when I can, when I have time, but in general, I'm probably not going to go crazy with all the little edits. I'd sit there for like two hours, three hours editing each little talking point. And now they have AI that I just haven't quite got integrated into my, my editing system, but AI that, that can do full podcasts and chop up all the video. So technology is, is, is going crazy right now. It always has been, but, but, um, you know, you can only integrate so much new things into your workflow, into your life at a time. And me anyway, you know, I, I'm trying, I'm definitely trying new things out, but I'm not necessarily, Here's a good example. I record this podcast on a few things, on an audio recorder, on a video recorder on my laptop for the video part. And this laptop that I'm using is older and it started kind of breaking down now and again. It was getting weird. It's It, it gets bogged down. Now I got a new laptop that doesn't, you know, I, I don't have Pro Tools on it. I don't have certain things on it. I don't have this recorder on it. And so now I sort of in a in a slow a slow situation where I'm slowly transition transitioning from this old computer to my new one where I'm not taking everything that was on this computer and just copying it to the new one I'm taking only 
this application, this application, this file. That's it. That's all I want. I don't want a bunch of extra, uh, you know, files scattered all over my hard drive. I don't want to be, um, you know, one of those one of those people on those re- reality TV shows that are hoarding everything. So, so you know, a, a new laptop is a, a nice way to sort of like, okay, clean slate. Let's start new and. But one of those things is the recorder for this podcast doesn't work with the newer OS and the newer browser systems and and all that. Like this computer right here, I can't upgrade the OS. I can't upgrade even my browser. Can't upgrade the browser because I don't have the right OS to upgrade the browser. So first world problems, am I right? But it's still a thing. All right, moving on. Thanks, Russ. Hey, Mike, it's uh, Larry. I grew up in New York City, but I uh, currently live in Houston, Texas. been listening to you guys for a long time. Uh, I discovered Life in General. Uh, the year came out in 1996 um, and actually saw you guys live, I think, for the first and maybe only time uh, at Tramps uh, in NYC um, on June 22, 1997. Don't ask me why I remember the date. Uh, you guys were opening for Face to Face, and I believe yes. Mustard Plug was the opener. Um, incredible show. Um, fast forward to slowly going the way of Buffalo. Um, I feel like I haven't been listening to your podcast that long, but I get the sense, you know, every time you allude to that album, it sounds like you didn't have great vibes around it, i um, guessing, because uh, A&M, I, I don't think, supported you guys all that much for that for that record. Um, but I got to tell you, that's still one of my favorites. I mean, the songwriting is just incredible. I had a three-piece pop-punk band back in the day, and we used to warm up playing under lock and key, Tomorrow's Another Day, and the final slow dance back to back to back. <laughs> my parents' Manhattan apartment, and we probably usually got to the final slow dance before we started hearing banging on the walls telling us to pipe down. But, I mean, I, I love that album, and those those first three are phenomenal. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, again, been listening to you guys for a long time, ever passing, uh, before everything and after. Uh, but it's funny, I kind of, somewhere along the line, I kind of fell off. And so recently discovered your podcast and then I heard, uh, one of the songs off of Secret Weapon on Faction Punk on Sirius XM. And I was like, I thought I knew every MXPX song. Um, and this was, uh, Punk Rock Celebrity. So I threw Secret Weapon on. I remember when it came out in 07, for whatever reason, it didn't connect with me at the time, but I have been listening to it nonstop over the last few weeks. It is an incredible record, um, maybe one of my favorites of you guys', is, um, and I didn't even really realize it existed, which is crazy. I mean, especially, it's almost like, it almost sounds like two different records, like starting with You're on Fire, I feel like there's a distinct A side and a B side to it. It's almost like you guys' Abbey Road, something like that. Um, in any case, just thought I'd share those thoughts, and you guys have been a big part of my musical uh, listening for a long, long time, and so much respect for what you do and your talent. Um, I did have a question. Because you have so many songs, I was wondering if you're ever putting a set list together, and you're looking through things, and you're like, I don't remember writing that, or I don't remember how that one goes. Um, probably not. I mean, I know you live and die by these songs, but um, you guys have so many songs and so many amazing songs. And uh, I was curious uh, whether uh, you, you ever look back at something and you're like, man, I wrote that song. Um, anyway, hope you're doing well. Thanks for the podcast. Thanks for uh, years and years of great music. Really appreciate you. Take care. Larry, thanks, man. Thanks for the call. Dude, Tramps is one of my all-time favorite venues. I love that place. We played there back in the day, or you know, mid-90s, 97. Um, like you said, June 22nd, 1997, we played our first show at Cramps. Um, opening for face to face that that was our opening for face to face was our big sort of tour. It was I think our third tour, our third year of touring. We were touring through ninety five through ninety six, ninety seven. We got uh, I want to say dance all crash. We went on tour with dance all crashers before that. So maybe it was after that. I, I'm really confused to be honest. I can't remember what where we were, but we did probably three or four tours a year. So that that Tramps tour was just one of the tours, but it was the main tour we did that year. Um, that was the infamous time where Face to Face destroyed our van because <laughs> on the last show in Philadelphia, they put Sloppy Joe's meat, like canned Sloppy Joe meat. They put all the meat filling all over our engine 
and inside our hubcaps. And the worst was the engine, just having it on your engine and it was baking in the sun. And then we like drove that, you know, that night and went to a hotel. And then the next morning we woke up and it was just like, oh, the smell. It was terrible. We, we spent hours and hours trying to clean our van. Um, we still love face to face, though, <laughs> but they destroyed. They did. They lovingly pranked our van. Um, now, you're talking about slowly going the way of the Buffalo was a weird time with the record label a and I think you got a little confused because we were actually mad at Tooth and Nail Records. So Tooth and Nail Records, we were in a fight with them. We left Tooth and Nail, went to a and and put out Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo. And that was our first record on a and our first major label album. And it did great. It did amazing. And, and of course, people know the, the story of we put out Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo and Tooth and Nail used all of that. that um, it was part of the deal that they would use slowly going the way of the buffalo to sell you know sell some of those for themselves and use all the promotion and all that those dollars to promote you know use that for themselves as well um what they did was they did that but they also released let it happen like a month or two after slowly going the way of the buffalo and that just like destroyed the momentum of buffalo i I mean it it did go gold it sold over five hundred thousand records but it probably would have done even more if Let It Happen wasn't there with 32 songs for like $9. It was insane. The price was, it was, it, it might have even been like $6 at Tower Records or something like that. So it was, it was, it was a door buster. It was like, come and get this record. So people couldn't, they couldn't not buy Let It Happen. And, and we were lucky if people bought Let It Happen and also bought, oh, I'm going to go ahead and buy Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo, the new album. Um, you know, looking back on that artwork as well. It's funny because it wasn't flashy artwork. It was like this drab, brown, tan picture. (laughs) And like no faces, no logo, you know, small logo. Like it was like, what are these guys doing? But, you know, despite all of those sort of bad decisions when it comes to marketing Buffalo, um, bad decisions and then just things that Tooth & Nail was was doing. It wasn't our decision, but despite all that we still went gold it still it was a huge record for us one of our one of our biggest records and uh you know it's funny is the record after that but you were just talking about um punk rock celebrity and and wait no that's that's secret weapon um you were talking about maybe before everything and after and and the stuff we did after that those records were really big too like a ton of people listened to those records um but at that time, it was like a new audience was emerging. So we have like sort of our old school audience, and then the new audience. And nowadays, it's just a mix of everything. It's a mix of some people are from the old, old school way back in the day. Some people are from the middle school. And some people discovered us right here, like with Let's Ride, with with uh, even Can't Keep Waiting and Worries, like some of those songs from the pandemic. We uh, we, we definitely, you know gain some new fans from that. So people come from all over and it's, it's crazy. Now you were asking about the set list. Let me go ahead and answer your question. Um, there are so many songs that I don't know how to play so many songs, but rarely is there a song where I don't actually remember. Um, I don't remember the details of recording this or that, but I remember, okay, that's on that album. That was during that session. Yeah. I remember that song kind of, but when it comes to set lists, if we're going to play a song, uh, we, I got to go th- go over it. I got to practice it, relearn it. And I think most musicians, most artists that's, that write their own songs feel the same way or, I don't know, feel the same way. They have the same experience where they don't know every single song, but if there's a song on a set list that's something that they're not familiar with, you just learn it to do that set. I do that all the time with Goldfinger as well. Obviously, I don't know all those songs from scratch because I didn't write them. And so I'm just learning them like anybody would learn them. All right, dude, Larry, stand up guy. I appreciate your call. I love that you're from New York and you saw us at Tramps. That place is epic. Also, I uh, hope Houston, Texas is treating you well. I always love Texas, all over Texas, but Houston, Houston's a good time. It's hot there, man. It's just so hot. Oh, I'm up in Washington right now, enjoying the, the 70, 80 degree weather. All right, let's do two more, two more pods. Two more, or sorry, two more messages. Here we go. Hey, Mike, it's Jordan from West Virginia calling in again. 
Um, just wanted to touch on what you said about Plans Within Plans being a strange record hmm. whenever you were talking about recording albums. Um, mm, yeah. What was okay. strange about it, uh, some of the best song selection from MXPX, I think, on that album, at least for you know the latter part of your career. Um, yeah, just curious why you thought it was strange or any stories surrounding that. Just let me know. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the call, Jordan. Thanks for calling again, by the way. Um, yeah, straight up, Plans Within Plans was a different record for us when it came to the recording session. So our first album, Poking At You, we went over to Seattle, Avast Studios in Wallingford, and which is like the U District of Seattle, so University District in Seattle. And the University of Washington is right there, UW. Um, anyway, that's that was our first recording experience with Aaron Sprinkle at Avast. And you go in, you have a bunch of songs, you record the songs, you're done, right? And we did that for Teenage Politics. We did that for, you know, Teenage Politics was also at a vast with Bob Moon. And then we did that for all of our other records. Life in general, we recorded twice. But the first time was uh, Bob Lang Studio in Seattle, Shoreline. And uh, we re-recorded that at West, um, at West Beach Recorders in Hollywood with Steve Kravac. Um, but the, the session, the reason I'm saying all this is cause like it, it was always the same thing. You just, you, you show up, the band sets up, we play a bunch of songs, we record those songs, we're done. Um, you know, a few things have happened. Like when we went back for life in general, the second time in, in at West beach in Hollywood, we did two sessions. So the first two weeks or the first week and a half was, was drums and bass and a few things. And then, guitars and we did and we went on tour for a while and then we came back a couple weeks later or a month later and did another two weeks and did vocals and did more guitars and did a bunch more vocals and gang vocals and that's when melancholin came in and, and you know that kind of stuff so um plans within plans was strange because that was really the only album that we've made where we weren't all together the whole time now, there's been plenty of albums where Yuri does his drums and then he's done and he takes off and we're still there working. He comes back and checks it out now and again. That's pretty normal. But Plans Within Plans was made with Yuri. So I wrote the songs. It was at a weird time where I was doing like a lot more tumble down stuff. I was like, I was all over the place, right? I was just trying to survive, just trying to do my thing. And so I got the songs together. Got Yuri in there, and Yuri and I worked out those songs. Um, like, I kind of, like, made templates and kind of had it all, like, this is how it's going to go to make it easy for Yuri. And that's different because normally we'll just get in and practice together and practice the songs. So we didn't actually practice the songs for Plans Within Plans before we recorded. We just recorded. And Yuri did his parts. I did some of my parts. We got ready, and then Tom came in randomly he'd come in like a day here a day there and he'd come in and record some and leave and i'd be working on stuff in between and then i'd be like all right i'm ready when can you come in next come in come in and record so like that was that was a weird session for us because we normally are all together the whole time record 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 all right we're done this was record a little bit hold off record a little bit a lot more like how people record bedroom albums but this was a real album in the studio right here upstairs. Um, but just done like a bedroom album. We kind of did it, did it in pieces. So the songs themselves are just songs I wrote. Like, um, I think they sound a little different because we did a little less MXPX affine of them. They sound a little bit more like what they would sound like if I was writing like a solo punk record or, and nowadays it probably wouldn't sound anything like that. But at the time it, it sounded like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like that record a lot. I, I don't mean to say it was a strange record. It was just a strange recording session. And, you know, so I hope that clears it up for you, Jordan. But great question because, you know, not a lot of people know about Plans Within Plans. Um, that's got some, some fun songs, you know. It's got, well, my favorite, Aces Up, straight up, like a song about gambling. But it's really not about gambling. It's about taking chances in your life, you know. And sometimes you got to take a chance to, to really 
make things happen in your life. And I feel like that's what we've done with MXPX over and over and over. And um, Aces Up is just it's just a, a little anthem about about gambling, about gambling with your life. Um, other songs I like off that record. Um, there's some weird ones. Like <laughs> here I am saying it's weird again. Um, let me let me look it up. We got, oh, Far Away, of course, is the single. Yeah, great song. Stay on Your Feet. A lot of people love that one. One of my favorites is Screw Loose. Just the the raw power of it, the guitar parts. Uh, you know, I love that kind of punk song. Um, Lucky Guy, The Times. These are the times I'm living for. Love that bass line. So, yeah, I mean, I really feel like, and the reason why we don't play a lot of these songs live or very often, we might do during a live stream, you know, here and there, but. I think it's because we made this record in a different way to where we all kind of barely remember some of these songs. Like <laughs> going back to, going back to, uh, was it uh, uh, Larry's question? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just, you just don't have the same experience with some of these, some of these recording sessions and some of these songs, but I really like some of those. Nothing's going to change inside out. These songs are like, yeah, the, the, they're fun for me. I mean, these are this is just me writing a bunch of songs. That's that's what it is, and and not so much working them out in the practice room. That's what plans with within plans sounds like to me. All right. Um, thanks, Jordan. Let's do one more, and I'll let you guys go. Have a great week, everyone. Hey, Mike. Todd here, Southwest Iowa. Second time caller, long time fan. I've got a quick story and a question question um have you guys thought about or had any opportunities where you might be coming to i guess the upper midwest region you know, being in the omaha area i'm thinking omaha kansas city des moines lincoln a little further out could be i suppose chicago minneapolis um i guess even further than that we'd be getting into the mountain region with like denver but uh yeah if you're ever in Omaha, Kansas City, Des Moines, Lincoln, that region. Uh, I'd be super stoked. And the story. And you might have heard this story because I posted it on Twitter and the MXPX account liked it, but I thought it was sort of a funny story. I'm a paramedic by trade, but I also work part-time on the side as a bike mechanic, you know, bicycles. So the shop owner, he usually has his phone paired to a Bluetooth speaker playing like some classic jazz, blues, classic rock, that sort of a mix. For whatever reason, his phone stopped streaming. I think he made a phone call or something. So I paired my phone because I'm working away on a bike while he's out talking to a customer or whatever. So I pair my phone and I put on MXPX and a customer asks him what this music is. Um, and without missing a beat, he described it as, you can't tell me not to skate here music. <laughs> and I just thought that was beautiful. So anyway, thanks, Mike, for the good times. I'll talk to you later and hopefully see you somewhere around the Midwest. Peace. Dude, I love that, Todd. I love that description. That is perfect. That's a perfect description. You can't tell me not to skate here music. And, and that's... I'm going to start using that. Um, to answer your question, yes, we will be back in the Midwest. I know it's annoying, and but we will. We will. Um, you know, we like Chicago a lot. You know, we like Denver. But we'll get into the. We'll get into somewhere else. We'll get in there. Uh, it's just a matter of time. It just takes a little time. Just takes some time, little girl. You know, I should, probably shouldn't be singing that. I'm going to get flagged. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my song. It's you'd be crazy. Things are changing all over, like with YouTube and and uh, copyright issues with music. I always get flagged now. Like you can't, you can't have ads on this. Like I didn't ask for ads. I don't want ads. Anyway, sorry, a little little off the topic, but I love that your boss came out with. You can't tell me not to skate here, music, because it really is. It really is like going back to just the cerebral thoughts in my brain when I was a kid I was anti-authority I was anti B 
being told what to do, like it, most kids, right? It, I was a normal kid, right? And that really is what I channeled when I wrote songs for MXPX. So the, you know, poking at you and, and till now, even I still do that, but I think of things that are bothering me and I write a song about it, or I think of something that's great about life and I write a song about it. So it's like both. It's like a juggling act of here's a terrible situation that happened to me and how I deal with it. And here's a great situation and how I, and I hope I don't lose this, right? There's always a, an anxiety of if it's really good, I'm going to lose it, you know? And if it's really bad, how do I lose this feeling? You know, like, how do I get rid of this bad thing, bad situation? So very real. So yeah, from a, from a place of like true childhood, thinking about when I was writing songs for the first time, if you would have told, told me this is, you can't tell me what, uh, not to skate here music, that would have been right in line with what I was already thinking. Like, yes, you can't tell me not to skate here. Like, what's the problem? Where else are we going to go? It's a perfectly nice parking lot. Like things like, <laughs> look at this curb. It was meant to be ground, uh, grinded. Do you say grinded? Do you say ground? It was meant to, to for a grind. <laughs> uh, how does that never come up where I've been talking about skateboarding and I'd be like, this is meant to be grinded. This is meant to be ground. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking it out. I appreciate you all. Um, I love doing this podcast. I hope you love listening and um, I will have guests on again soon. I'm just, I've been so, so busy lately. So, so busy. And when I'm the busier I am, the harder it is for me to, to schedule a guest on a podcast. So like when I'm doing these episodes, it's just me. I schedule me. I just sit down. Do I have like a few minutes to do this? All right, let's, let's do it. Um, but sadly, my minutes are up. I need to go get back to work and make some things happen. Guide some people along the way, of course. And I'm sure you guys can do the same thing. I'm sure you're at, some of you are at work right now going, yeah, I probably should be doing this project or this thing that I have been putting off because I just love listening to this podcast. Hey, no need to feel guilty about that. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. If you want to call in, leave a message, 360-830-6660. Leave me a message. And, of course, hit me up on all the socials. If you're on any social, find My Career Podcast on that social and follow me. I will see you if you comment. I will see if you if you heart it or like it or whatever. I'll see you on there. But the best place for people to submit music is on the Facebook podcast group. It's a private group. You have to join it. But it's free. And that's the best place to submit your, your Music Monday thing. And then as far as what to send me, send me a YouTube link. Don't send me a Spotify link. Don't send me a link to some random thing. Send me a YouTube because anybody can use YouTube, including me, including Bob, including anybody out there that wants to hear your song. If it's on, if it's not on YouTube, what did you, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> that should just be a default. It's free. Put it on YouTube so we can all hear it because when you put it on Spotify, that's cool. That's free too, but not everybody uses Spotify. So like only some people, you got to do everything. You got to do YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, blah, 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 blah. But if you're not doing all of those things, at the very least, YouTube. And I'm not saying it's the best place to get your music out. It's just the easiest for me and for other people to just grab a link and listen to a song. Boom. Nothing to sign into. No problems. Just we get to hear your songs. All right. So Music Monday, send me a YouTube link. And if you've already sent me something on like Instagram DM or on on uh, my personal Facebook or on Twitter, that's all cool. But I probably am not going to be able to get that onto the show. Uh, there's just too many now. So now we're going to go to the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group for Music Monday submissions. Boom. I think I made that clear. And I'll leave you with that. MXPX.com. Thank you. Furnace Fest is coming up September 22nd. That's less than three months away. We are getting so amped for that. We're going to have a whole different set for just that show. Believe me, you're not going to want to miss this one. We will never play a set like this 
except for the reason, except for the fact that we're playing Furnace Fest and the type of fest that it is. It's so many old school Tooth and Nail fans, old school punk fans, hardcore fans. So we're gonna play a little bit different kind of set for you. All right, that's it. That's my that's my podcast for the week. I appreciate you guys, and I will I will see you next time. Cheers.